Hi, my name is Julian Bright. I'm an AI and ML specialist solution architect with Amazon Web Services. In the session today, you'll be learning how to apply A-B testing to machine learning models with Amazon SageMaker and MLOps best practices. Let's look at a quick agenda. Firstly, we will talk about what is A-B testing. Then we'll do a deep dive on A-B testing algorithms. We will explore how Amazon SageMaker can help us build an MLOps solution for A-B testing, followed by a demo before we wrap up. A-B testing at its most basic is a way to compare two versions of something to which we figure out which performs better. Whilst it's most often associated with websites and apps, the method is almost 100 years old, dating back to the 1920s, when statistician and biologist Ronald Fisher discovered the most important principles behind A-B testing and randomised control experiments in general. Fisher ran agricultural experiments asking questions such as, what happens if I put more fertiliser on this land? The principles persisted and in the early 1950s, scientists started running clinical trials in medicine. So regardless of the domain, the goal of A-B testing is to design an experiment that is robust and gives repeatable results so that you can make good business decisions. So how does A-B testing work? Well, you start an A-B test by deciding what it is you want to test. Say you want to experiment with finding a new restaurant. Then you decide how you want to evaluate its performance. In this case, let's say results will be measured on the average star rating. Say your favourite restaurant is right around the corner, if you go there every day, you would be confident of what you'll get, but miss the chance of discovering an even better option. If you try a new place all the time, you're likely to find some bad food from time to time, but there's a chance you might find a new favourite which you'd otherwise have overlooked. We refer to this process of trying something new as exploration versus exploitation where we exploit a choice that we knew previously to deliver a good reward. In the context of machine learning, A-B testing is an extension to offline model evaluation. Offline evaluation is a data science practice of holding out a test or validation data set during the machine learning training process so you can evaluate how effective your model is at performing predictions on unseen data. Data scientists will iterate on the evaluation process in an attempt to get the best performance tuning the data preparation and model parameters and using visualizations such as the receiver operation characteristic curve or RSC curve in this case to help diagnose the ability for the binary classifier to correctly separate true from false positive predictions. Now before deploying models to all users it's a good idea to run a new or challenger model with side by side for your existing champion model in an A-B test to find the empirical evidence of the impacts this new model has on your business metrics, such as click-through rate, conversion rate, or revenue. By collecting feedback as your model is running, you can optimize how traffic is distributed between the champion and the challenger models for the period of the test, which can often run for a number of weeks. Once you're confident that this new challenger model is outperforming your previous champion, you can deploy this model to all users and begin the process again. So when should you perform an A-B test? Well, the first case is when you have a different data set. This could be because your data set has been updated to include the latest fresh data. Or you might have applied some new cleaning, normalization or scaling, which has changed the data set composition. Or perhaps you've resampled the data in an attempt to adjust for class imbalance or remove bias. Now, the second case is when you have a different model you might be trying a different algorithm architecture, such as a new deep learning model. You might want to try running a hyperparameter optimization job to tune some settings like embedding size or learning rate. Or perhaps you're using a transfer learning technique to fine tune a pre-trained NLP or computer vision model. Today, we're going to see how to apply A-B testing to the use case of recommending helpful reviews. In this example, you can see customer reviews for the Echo Show 5. We can see for this device there are a total of 937 ratings with an average of 4.5 out of 5 stars. You can also see on this page a top positive and top critical review. 
Given the opportunity to display these reviews, which should we choose? Users looking to buy an Echo Show, or any other product for that matter, provide feedback on reviews that are helpful, and we use this data to train a machine learning classification model, which can then identify the most helpful reviews just based on that free text. This then allows us to surface the best new reviews whilst we're waiting for users to validate our selection with their feedback. In the next section, we're going to deep dive on A-B testing algorithms. To run a traditional A-B test in its simplest form, you need two sets of users assigned at random to either control or experimental treatment in order to improve a business metric. In our case, helpful reviews. Firstly, you define a baseline metric on historical data, e.g. 30% of reviews are rated helpful or click through when researching a product. You then need to define an expected improvement on your metric, 5% is a common target here, and define the statistical significance or confidence interval for the test, which helps quantify whether a result is likely due to chance or some other factor of interest. Finally, you then calculate a sample size for each variation and run the test until you have obtained that sample size. Once the test is complete, you can evaluate if you observed a true difference in your metric as we can see with the graph on the right-hand side here. So traditional A-B tests have two distinct periods of exploration and exploitation. The first being when you explore whether a new model variant is going to challenge the current champion. While you're establishing the winner, you're sending traffic to the less effective variant until the winner is declared, which in this case is week five. Now, Multi-unbanded testing is adaptive and it includes periods of exploration and exploitation over the duration of the test, sending more traffic to the challenger variant that is delivering the highest reward as defined by your conversion metric. So this process can be faster and more efficient because you're spending less time sending traffic to the inferior variations resulting in a better user experience. You might be asking, so how does a multi-armbanded work? Well, multi-unbanded problem is best understood through an analogy. A gambler at a row of slot machines wear N arms and you need to decide which arm to pull and in which order. When pulled, each arm provides a reward from a distribution specific to that machine. The objective is to maximize the total reward collected and you do this in order to explore which arm is being more effective over time to learn the reward distribution. For example, Arm one may provide a 30% success rate, but if you don't explore arm three, you wouldn't have found out that it would provide a higher 40% success rate. Now, applying this to review helpfulness. We have a list of new reviews that we want to surface to our users that provide the most helpful insights when thinking about their purchase. We have a champion ML model, and we want to explore how effective new variants Challenger one and Challenger two are at identifying helpful reviews. As we test these models with users, they provide feedback by clicking the helpful button from which we calculate a conversion rate based on the number of times this review has been surfaced. Now, based on how we do exploration, there are a number of bandit strategies. We can start with a random weighted distribution whilst we're collecting user feedback. Then we can use the reward probability estimates based on user feedback to help exploit the best performing models with either option. Now, a simple bandit strategy like Epsilon Greedy is something that we can explore. Or there are more sophisticated strategies such as the Upper Confidence Bound, or UCB, or Thompson Sampling that we'll learn about in the next few slides. The key takeaway here is that these smart strategies use that reward feedback to exploit the best performing model variants. So Epsilon Greedy algorithm selects the best model variants most of the time but does some random exploration occasionally based on this epsilon parameter. Now, if epsilon is 0.1, 10% of the time we choose a model variant at random. The other 90% of the time we choose variant that has the highest expectation of reward. So on the right, the bar graph depicts the relative reward over time for the champion and challenger variants. The yellow and blue lines depict cumulative reward probability for our challenger two model variant, where the blue is slightly lower as its epsilon value is 0 
which means 20% of the time it's exploring, introducing more chance of selecting the poorer performing variant. Now the upper confidence bound algorithm represents uncertainty around variants by keeping track of how many times a variant is selected. Initially we explore variants with high uncertainty that have been infrequently selected, which at the end of week one is our challenger one variant more likely to be selected due to that higher upper confidence bound of 0.7. Then in week two, uncertainty levels drop. We exploit the variants with the highest mean plus that uncertainty, which puts variant two or challenger two variant ahead of the upper confidence bound of 0.5. Now, it's worth noting that the UCB algorithm is deterministic as it doesn't include any randomness at all. So it will quickly settle for a clear winner. Thompson sampling estimates the uncertainty around our variants by using beta probability distributions defined on the interval between zero and one and parameterized by two inputs, alpha and beta, which correspond to the number of helpful versus not helpful reviews. We start out with all model variants having a similar distribution. In this case, alpha and beta are both equal to two. Then we randomly sample the distribution for each variant and select the variant with the highest sampled value. In this case, it's challenger one with a value of 0.5. Now, as we capture user feedback, we update alpha and beta values, which adjust the shape of the distributions. As you can see with the skew right in challenger two, that increase the help, number of helpful reviews. If we fast forward to week three, we have a lot more feedback and the beta distributions are becoming taller and skinnier, which reduces the area from which the random sampling occurs. As the overlaps of these distributions decrease, the random sampling will favor the variant with the highest reward more often. So why bandits over traditional A-B testing? It turns out the main challenge with A-B testing is to minimize poor performing variants. Now, this can happen with A-B testing when one variant is vastly inferior to the other and yet continues to receive equal amounts of traffic unless a test is cut short. multi arm bandits provide the opportunity to call the winner early when the following conditions are met. One, the experiment has reached a regular traffic during the test period. Two, the experiment has run for a su sufficient period of time to cancel out any periodicity, for example, over a full two weeks. And three, the new variant has exceeded the expected performance improvement, for example, that 5% over the baseline conversion. Then if the new algorithm is selected 95% of the time by our bandit strategy, we can call that experiment a success. So let's explore how Amazon SageMaker can help with an MLOps solution for A-B testing. Machine learning development is a complex and costly process, and there are barriers to adoption at each step of the machine learning workflow, from collecting and preparing data, which is time consuming and undifferentiated, to choosing the right machine learning algorithm, which is often done by trial and error, to lengthy training times, which leads to higher costs. Then there is model tuning, which can be a very long cycle and require adjusting thousands of different parameter combinations. Once you've deployed a model, you must monitor it and then scale and manage it in production. Amazon SageMaker is built from the ground up to provide every developer and data scientist with the ability to build, train and deploy machine learning models quickly and at a lower cost by providing the tools required for every step in the ML development lifecycle in one integrated fully managed service. Amazon SageMaker Pipelines is an ML CI/CD service accessible to every developer and data scientist. SageMaker Pipelines brings CI/CD pipelines to ML, reducing the months of coding required to manually stitch together different code packages to just a few hours. With just a few clicks in SageMaker Pipelines, you can create an automated machine learning workflow. SageMaker Pipelines takes care of all the heavy lifting involved with managing the dependencies between each step of the workflow and orchestrates them so you can scale to thousands of models in production. To help you get started quickly, SageMaker Pipelines offers pre-configured templates for model building, model deployment pipelines, and also provides the ability to customize templates as we will see in our demo. Amazon SageMaker Pipelines provides complete model deployment management, including a registry where we can track and compare 
model versions based on evaluation metrics and approve models for deployment. The fully managed CI-CD infrastructure integrates with AWS Code Pipeline and AWS Code Build to build and allows us to create custom MLOps templates for projects such as our A-B testing pipeline. Model deployment is managed using AWS CloudFormation for seamless upgrades and you can target ML-optimized hardware to best suit your use case. Here, you can see an example of Amazon SageMaker pipelines for training machine learning model. When a user commits a change for a new or updated model on a feature branch, a Git trigger, such as a pull request, can invoke AWS code build to run a SageMaker pipeline workflow that will train the model, then register the version with the SageMaker registry. You can evaluate model performance on a validation set and see those metric and logs directly within Amazon SageMaker Studio. Once you're ready to deploy that model, you can then update the status of that to approved and it's ready for deployment. For our A-B testing pipeline, we have created a custom MLOps template for a multivariant endpoint deployment. The user starts by committing a config file to our Git repository, which tells the AWS code build job how many variants we want to deploy. When the new model is approved, the AWS code build job queries the model registry to get the latest model versions and constructs an AWS CloudFormation template using CDK for the next stage of the pipeline, which is to deploy the multivariant endpoint. Once this step is complete, the final stage is to invoke an API gateway endpoint, which is part of the AB testing model serving infrastructure. So Amazon SageMaker endpoints support multi-production variants and traffic is distributed evenly based on the weights that you provide. You can also specify a target variant in the invoke endpoint request to return predictions from a specific model variant. But if a model variant returns different predictions, how can we ensure a consistent experience for an end user? Well, one answer is that we need to store the specific model variant assigned to a user, and then we'll be able to solve that with some additional model serving infrastructure as we see in the next slide. For A-B testing machine learning models where we dynamically allocate users to model variants in real time, we need some additional infrastructure in our multi-variant Amazon SageMaker endpoint. The API gateway acts as a proxy to Amazon SageMaker, but before making that call, it needs to get the target variant for a given user. We look this up in DynamoDB, and we also need a place to capture and store metrics, which we'll use to provide to our banded algorithms which are making the decisions for which model variants to explore or exploit. Let's walk through an example on our end. We need to make a decision about what is the most helpful reviews to surface to a user. If a user makes an invoke request to our prediction API, the first thing that AWS Lambda handler needs to do is an attempt to get the variant assigned to the user from the DynamoDB. If we don't have any record of this, we need to fetch the latest metrics for each model variant and pass these to the bandit algorithm, which will tell us which variant we should target next. We store this against the user, and then we invoke the target variant on Amazon SageMaker endpoint. Next, we log this invocation to the Kinesis event stream for later processing, and we return that response to the user. Now, in order for our banded algorithms to learn which model variants are performing the best, they require reward feedback, which is helpful reviews in our case. We capture this as a conversion against the original user request, which is also logged back to Kinesis. Now, since we're using Kinesis data firehose to capture these invocation and conversion events, they're periodically saved to S3. This triggers a put event that calls our processing Lambda, which is responsible for updating DynamoDB, and also publishing metrics to CloudWatch. Now, this process happens many times in the course of an A-B test. The more user invocations and conversion events that are captured, the smarter our banded algorithms get at selecting the best performing model. Now, before we jump into a demo, let's see this in action. Let's look at the request and response payloads for the invocation and conversion endpoints. The invocation request contains the name of the con endpoint, the content type, a user identifier, and the data that we want to pass along to that SageMaker endpoint, in this case, the review text. 
The response tells us that the endpoint variant was assigned to a particular variant name along with the predictions being returned and a unique invocation ID for that request. For the conversion request, we don't require any additional data, just the user ID and original invocation, along with an optional reward, which if not provided is set to one. You receive a response once the conversion event is logged. Great, now it's time to see our A-B testing pipeline in action with a demo. In this demo, we're going to build and deploy two competing machine learning models to classify helpful reviews using the Amazon SageMaker blazing text algorithm. It's worth noting, however, that this solution is generic and could be applied to any model and any A-B testing scenario for which you have real-time user feedback. Okay, here we are in Amazon SageMaker Studio. I'm going to create a new project using my MLOps A-B testing pipeline that I've published as an organizational template. I'm going to call this project SageMaker A-B testing summit. and I'm going to paste in my API endpoint that I've previously deployed as part of the model serving infrastructure setup. Now, while I'm waiting for this to create, I'm going to open my review helpfulness notebook in a new tab. This notebook will be used to download and prepare a data set, create a SageMaker pipeline workflow to train our initial model, followed by a tuning job to create a subsequent model that we will use to simulate an A-B test against. So let's start by downloading the data set. This is a 600 megabyte file containing Amazon customer reviews for electronics products. We're gonna load this into a data frame and list the fields and inspect the first five rows of the data set. We can see that we have some records that contain star ratings, helpful votes alongside the review headline and body text. Next, we're going to do some feature engineering to create a helpful score, which we can see has a mean statistic of 15 votes for every 20, making that an average of 0.75. Now let's visualize some of those statistics grouped by negative, neutral, and positive reviews. On the x-axis, we have a helpful score of zero to one. We can see that our positive reviews, a helpful score above 0.8, correlate with a majority of four and five star ratings. In the next section, we will remove products with only one review or less than five helpful votes, and we'll create a binary classifier target to base our 0.8 helpful review threshold on. Okay, now we're ready to split our data frame into training, validation, and test sets. The SageMaker blazing text algorithm we're using to classify reviews requires a single pre-processed text file with space separated labels followed by a single sentence. We're using the Spacey NLP library to perform this tokenization. Next, we'll create a SageMaker an experiment and trial and use that name in an S3 prefix when we upload the data to S3. Now we're ready to create a SageMaker pipeline to train our first model. Let's start by uploading the project, updating the project name to match our A-B testing summit pipeline we created at the start of the demo. The pipeline defines input parameters for instance type as well as our S3 training and validation set locations. In the following cell, we define an estimator training and register model steps, which make up the complete pipeline. And we finish up by adding the project name tags so we can actually make this visible in SageMaker Studio. Now we're ready to run and create the pipeline. This will take a few minutes to execute. In the meantime, we can browse back to our project that we created and switch to the pipelines tab. We can select the pipeline that we just created and click through to see the current execution graph. Once this has been completed, we'll be able to inspect the training jobs in this UI. Okay, now let's jump back to the notebook to wait for the pipeline to complete. Okay, with that succeeded, let's query the pipeline lineage and see the output and input artifacts from this. If we inspect the analytics for this experiment, we can see various metrics, including the validation accuracy of about 0.68. So this looks good. Let's approve the model and push that version for deployment. Now, to try and improve on this model, we're going to run a hyperparameter tuning job across a range of parameters. We're going to run 15 jobs across three parallel instances. The goal here is to create a new and improved model 
variant to deploy as part of an A-B test for our initial model version. This will take approximately 30 minutes to run, so I'll pause the video here. Okay, with our training job complete, let's analyze those results. The leaderboard lists parameter metrics for the top performing models sorted by the final objective value. In this case, accuracy, which the top job has a score around 0 0.67. We can launch an interactive visualization to compare model accuracy on the y-axis with various hyperparameters that we tuned across the x-axis. We can compare the minimum word count or the vector dimensions, the higher the better in this case, uh, engrams of two or three also appear to performing better. And there's no clear correlations that are apparent when we're looking at the learning rate across those different jobs. Okay, well, let's go and register the best performing model from that tuning job. Um, so now when we list the registered models, we can see that there's two versions here that have been approved. And if we go back to our SageMaker project, we can click through on model groups and see that those approved versions are here as well. Okay, with two models approved, we should now have a deployment in progress. If we browse to the developer tools in the ADOS console, we can open up the pipeline section. And we can see that we have an active pipeline triggered from our model registry approval. The build stage has produced an AWS CloudFormation template from CDK, which is being deployed to create a multivariant endpoint for model one and model two. With that deployment complete, we can now test our endpoint. First of all, we'll load our test data set and we'll get the variant names for the deployed endpoint. Then we can make predictions against each of these target variants to evaluate their performance. This will return results in about less than 20 seconds. Joining the predictions back to the test data set, we can calculate an accuracy score for review helpfulness, and we can see that variant two has a winning value here. And if we plot the confusion matrix for this binary classification, we can see that variant two, while slightly worse on predicting unhelpful reviews at 61%, is slightly better at predicting helpful reviews at 70%. And the ROC curves have a similar 0.71 error under the curve scores as well. Okay, so now let's run the same model variance with an A-B test simulation. First of all, we need to grab that REST API endpoint for our model serving infrastructure. We can copy this from the output of CloudFormation. Then we're going to register our endpoint using the Thompson sampling strategy and verify the test metrics have been initialized. Now we can run our simulation, which will invoke the API to retrieve the most helpful reviews in batches of 20. Each request will be dynamically allocated a target variant. If the most helpful review matches our ground truth, we'll capture this as a reward and record this feedback with the conversion API, which will in turn update the variant metrics. Okay, great, let's check out the results. We can see that variant two was selected majority of the times with our Thompson sampling strategy after initial warm up with weighted sampling. And it has recorded a reward of a 0.8 from 663 invocations. In this first plot, we can see the cumulative reward over time, which records a strong preference for variant two in the dark blue. This is due to the algorithm optimizing for the winning reward rate, which after some initial variance is consistently higher for variant two. Now, if we look at the beta plots comparing variant one and variant two of the duration of the test, we can see that variant two distribution is narrowing around that 0.8 reward, and it's high probability to be selected. Wrapping this up, we can see that whilst variant two conversion rate is 9% higher than variant one, it's not yet statistically significant at a 95% confidence interval, so we would need to run the test for a longer period of time before calling the winner. So what did we learn today? Well, we learned that online A-B testing provides an additional step in model validation. That multi unbandeds optimize for selecting the best performing model variants by exploring early during an A-B test and exploiting those models that are delivering the highest reward. 
we saw how Amazon SageMaker MLOps can automate the training and deployment of multivariant endpoints, and we learned how to build a general purpose A-B testing framework and model serving infrastructure that can apply to any Amazon SageMaker model. So you joined the AWS Summit to learn, and you can keep learning by going through Summit resources from AWS training and certification. We offer over 65 courses, many available free and on demand, as well as virtual instructor-led training. AWS experts will help you or your team learn to apply ML to your business, unlocking new insights and value. When you're ready, prepare for the AWS Certified Machine Learning Specialty Exam, which validates your skills and provides an industry-recognized credential. For more information, visit aws.training forward slash machine learning and be sure to check out the AWS Ramp Up Guide to learn more. Thank you so much for taking the time today to learn about AV testing for machine learning models with Amazon SageMaker. I hope this has given you some practical next steps and you can take away and apply some online experiments for your own machine learning models. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give some feedback. Thank you.